Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would film my birth story and I wanted to film this video because it was a very different experience to what I was expecting and also very long and I think it, I don't know if it'll be helpful to people that are pregnant because I, I think only watch this video if you don't mind hearing like slightly slash very negative well not very negative but negative birth stories I would consider my birth negative in terms of like the experience compared to what it could be um so like if there's a scale of like a really positive birth and then a really negative birth I would say it's definitely more on like the negative side um but it's not like horrific or anything like that but it's not something that I would want to do again if I'm completely honest with you like I would never put myself through that entire experience and there's a lot of things I would do differently and I think that's why I'm making this video is because of those things that I would do differently and things that I would ask for or things that I would say no to so I I will share my experience and also it's something that I can look back on I can look back on this video and remember it because already I swear I've blocked out like most of what happened on that weekend because it was very traumatic for me and when you go through something traumatic you do often kind of just you know black it out of your mind and just move on with life and sometimes you think actually I don't remember like what happened that day or like you just forget little small details but anyway I've got myself a cup of tea in my Hello Pumpkin mug so we're nice and cozy um and basically I sent my friends the day after I gave birth, I sent them a long, um, kind of like a very long message as to exactly what happened that entire weekend. So I'm basically going to read that. So if I'm looking to the left, it's because I'm reading what the message I sent, because already, like I said, I've probably forgotten loads of details. Um, but yeah, just a slight disclaimer, watch this if you want to, if you're um, like really super scared about giving birth or anything I, I don't know, I, I would still watch the video because it's not, I have some reasons why my experience was bad that could be changed. So yeah, I'll stop rambling. So I didn't really have like a birth plan as such. I just said whatever happens, happens, which is exactly what happened. I just, in my head, I thought I'll try a natural, well, natural, um, unmedicated birth if possible and ask for the epidural if I'm in like too much pain. Anyway, that so that was what I was kind of hoping for and I was hoping that I would be, you know, start labouring at home, have some contractions, blah blah blah, go to the hospital, not be there too long and then give birth and not push for long, like that's the ideal scenario. What actually happened was I went in for a sweep on the Friday so I think it was Friday the 6th of September, that was the day after my due date, I went into the hospital for just a sweep and I'd been for one before and it hadn't worked because my cervix was too high. So they decided to do it another time, so that was what my appointment was for. She tried again and again she said, oh my cervix is too high. Then she did like other checks, so she was checking for um, like the baby's heartbeat and everything like that and just the normal checks they do. And she said that the baby's heartbeat was a little bit higher than it should be. So she decided to take me in um, for monitoring and just to kind of see how the heartbeat gets on. Well, baby's heartbeat was quite high for a very long time. The doctors all came in. At one point, there was about 11 people in the room just looking at the screen about, you know, the baby's heartbeat because... I think one of the doctors said it was like severe tachycardia or something. Um, so her heart rate was really, really high. And I think they were preparing for an emergency C-section, well, for a C-section, because there were so many doctors in the room and they were asking me about C-section. And I was like, well, obviously, like, if, if that's the only option. Um, anyway, I went upstairs and they put me in a labouring room because at that point they thought I was going to have to have like a C-section. And they came through and they saw on the monitor that her heart rate had gone back to normal. And they monitored me on that for a while and she was fine. They then said, okay, I don't sort of need a C-section. Do I want to be induced? Now, I remember a lot of people telling me, 
uh, that day was induced and it was awful and it was really intense pain and some people that have given birth without being induced and being induced with a second baby say that being induced is way 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 worse and the pain is a lot stronger obviously everyone's experiences are different but this is just what i was told so in the back of my head i had that kind of thought of oh this you know is like a decision that i'm not sure on but in the end i like spoke with jamie i spoke with my parents for advice and i thought you know what if the baby's heart rate starts going up when I'm at home, I won't really know about it. So it's probably safest if I get induced on the Friday, um, just to make sure that she's okay and stuff like that. And in my head, I thought, oh, maybe I'll be giving birth today. I was wrong, <laughs> okay? I was not giving birth on the Friday. But the hospital seemed keen for me to have the induction anyway. They seemed kind of like wanting to give me it. So they, the, the process for the induction is they started off by giving me this gel. It begins with a P, I can't remember what it's called, but basically they like insert it inside you um, with like a tube and it's just like a like dissolvable gel thing, like it's nothing crazy. Um, but the woman who gave me the gel tried to give me a sweep as well at the same time and she was put her hands inside. This is TMI, but you know, so given birth is TMI. Um, and she was trying to scrape my cervix down. Like she was trying to pull it down. And do you know how painful that is with zero painkillers? Is somebody trying to scrape your cervix down <laughs> with their bare hands? And yeah, that was really painful and I struggled with that. Um, and yeah, then she put the gel in and it was all right. And I would say within an hour, I started having contractions. They weren't labor contractions. They were like false contractions that the gel kind of encourages your body to do so that it might encourage labor to start. Well, um, I was having like really intense pains for about four hours and it was probably like 10 seconds. Well, I would say actually probably 20 seconds of really intense pain, 20 seconds of no pain and then 20 seconds pain, 20 seconds no pain, continuously for four hours. I couldn't sit down, I couldn't lay down, I was just bent over the sink and I was just trying to deal with the pain because they were so intense. And I know that's what people said about being induced is that it can go from zero to a hundred, like there's no build up of contractions, it doesn't start small and build up, it's just intense pain immediately. But I was very much struggling and Jamie was like not knowing what to do, like or anything and at that point there's nothing he can do like except for remain silent because at that point I couldn't talk or anything like that so I was just like yeah anyway it died down thank heavens the pain started to die down a bit and the contractions were slower um but that was kind of like a bad thing because it meant that labor hadn't started like it hadn't initiated my labor it was just causing me pain for no reason for 12 hours yes it lasted 12 hours I couldn't sleep I didn't sleep because if you're having a contraction every few minutes, you just can't sleep because it's painful. It wakes you up. I would try and sleep. I'd fall asleep one minute. Next minute, I'm in pain. Wake up. Ow. Kind of thing. And every time I woke up, I felt like I needed the toilet. So I felt like I needed the toilet about like 25 times every hour. Um, and it was just a really uncomfortable experience. I had loads of things attached to me. Um, I had like a cannula in me to a hydration drip thing. I had um, my pulse being monitored. I had the baby being monitored with two different cords, um, like its heart rate on the side, on the outside of my belly. And I had to press this thing to say when she was moving. And all of these things meant that you can't really turn on your side. So I was just facing upright and I struggled to sleep on my back anyway. So that was really hard for me. Anyway, every few hours they would come back and they would check my cervix. And just that whole experience in itself was really uncomfortable for me. And it really hurt. Like that was a thing. It felt really horrible and it really hurt. And the only painkillers I had was paracetamols. So... Fun. But basically what they was hoping for with this gel is that it would um, enable my cervix to come down so that they could um, falsely break my waters themselves. So just break my waters, um, not falsely, but for them to break my waters manually themselves. And it didn't do that. My cervix, they was checking it and it was just not, nothing was budging there. 
um and to be honest with you i didn't really want them to rate my waters anyway because it just sounded so awful like um there's this stick i saw the stick jamie picked it up and showed me and i was like i don't want to see that and it was like this big and they, they would have to put it inside me and then burst like well the water sack thingy and just the thought of that like i was just like no thank you I was kind of like hoping not to have that anyway, but then also I was because I had this damn gel thing that was causing so much pain. Anyway, after the 12 hours of that gel and it didn't work, they decided to give me it again. So I had another 12 hours of continuously being poked, prodded, checked, in pain all the time, no sleep, um, just kind of feeling quite sick as well. I felt really sick and I couldn't really eat because I wasn't really that hungry because of the pain. And it was just a really uncomfortable experience. So anyway, Jamie was staying over the night. He slept on the floor. Um, he made like kind of like a bed thing um, with a chair laid out on the floor. It was kind of weird. Um, in fact, in my last video that I posted where I showed you me you where I showed you the baby for the first time, I did a compilation of images, and the first image is how he slept. Um, so go and watch that if you haven't already. Anyway, so after though that 24 hour period of using that gel to try and initiate labour, I was so tired. I was in pain, I was struggling, and there was no sign of my cervix coming down. They wanted to do the gel again. And I was like, no, I can't do this anymore. I was genuinely just angry with just life in general like not necessarily them because this is what they do but I was just like no I can't deal with this anymore and I knew that if the gel didn't work again then I'd have this balloon thing put inside me for 12 hours and if that didn't work then there was another thing that they was going to try and I just thought I actually am going through actual torture right now like going through these contractions going through this pain going through people prodding you it's scraping your cervix like that is actual torture that is pure like going through that is awful like because obviously you can't sleep you can't eat you're in so much pain constantly and it's just horrible and I was like no I'm not doing it they came in the room these doctors did they tried to kind of convince me to do it and I said no I can't put myself through that anymore and I want to have a c-section because I just can't deal with this anymore if labor doesn't start naturally then I don't you know I don't want to go through all this inducing thing because it's too painful for me and I actually can't handle it with just paracetamols so anyway one of the doctors decided okay that's fine so they came and spoke to me and talked me through what would happen in a c-section and all the risks because obviously there are more risks there's also a longer recovery time which I knew about but at that point I wanted to do that because I could not see myself going through what I'd just been through again and more like I was just in so much pain and even when they was talking to me I was having contractions and I was just like this is ho horrific like this is awful and it is literally like period pains on the most highest level um obviously some people experience the pain differently or people have higher threat pain thresholds but for me no thank you that was not good anyway so they booked me in for the c-section for the next morning so I couldn't eat anything past like 2 a.m or something and I was like well I won't be eating at 2 a.m anyway and plus I hadn't really eaten anyway because of all the pain so I went to sleep and then the gel had worn off so the second round of gel had worn off and in the night I started getting contractions and I was like hang on the gel can't be like working again like it can't be like deciding to work again I was like is this labour contractions anyway so I managed to kind of get little bits of sleep and when I woke up in the morning the contractions had gone so I was like oh okay right nothing and I was preparing myself for the c-section I wasn't feeling really that nervous I was feeling all right and calm and relaxed anyway I decided to have a little lay down I had a bath everything I had a lay down and whilst I was laid down my waters broke naturally by themselves it went poof, like it was literally a gush of water on the bed and two minutes later a nurse uh, not a nurse a midwife came through and I was like oh by the way my waters have just broke and she was like and this was two hours before my c-section was booked so I had to then make a decision do I continue to do the c-section or do I just let to labor progress naturally I considered the recovery time, the fact that you can't drive for six weeks after a C-section and all the risks. And I decided to just stick it through and to go through with labour naturally, which I'm not sure. Looking back, I probably, 
I, I just, knowing what happened after that, I wished that I had done a C-section because I would never want to put myself through what I went through after making that decision. But if things were done differently in like the next few hours following that decision, then I might have been not as bad. Anyway, so I decided to progress naturally. So they decided to put me on a hormone drip to try and speed up my labour because they knew that I was going into labour. And I decided because I'd experienced the intense pain of the gel, uh, whatever it's called, begins with a P, that I wanted an epidural because I knew how bad those pains were. I knew I couldn't cope with them. And I thought, why, like, why do I need to go through this pain? You know, when I can just not go through this pain. So I was like, I'm having the epidural. I wasn't scared of being injected because when you're pregnant, you get injected left, right and centre. You get your blood taken, like there's needles everywhere anyway. So that wasn't a problem for me. And the risks of epidural was quite low. So I was just like, yeah, whatever, I'm having an epidural. So the guy came, spoke to me about the epidural. He was really nice. He was one of the friendliest people I've ever met. He was so nice and he um, was talking me through it and everything like that. And he was like, so when would you like the epidural doing? Would you like to have it straight away when you first go on the hormone drip or would you like to wait a while and see how your contractions go and I was like nope I'm having it immediately as soon as possible before even any pain starts because I know what the pain is going to be and I can't deal with it so yes please can I have it as soon as possible and also I didn't want to risk him not being available when I'm in that pain because honestly it's the kind of pain where I felt like it was not even bearable like I would pass out instead of deal with that pain so I yeah I said yes epidural please so um he put did the epidural for me before I went on the hormone drip and that was like a good like little process in itself but I was fine with that like I just knew that I was fine and that numbed my legs basically but not fully fully like you can still feel a sensation of something you just can't feel pain so that was what that was and they was like putting the medication into me in like little intervals like hourly intervals they would increase the uh, like put a dose into me of the epidural and um so it could wear down if they wanted to it wasn't like it was just continuously going in um but yeah they put me on the hormone drip and every hour they would check on me and every hour I'd be like yeah please can you put some more dosage in please um because as soon as it started wearing off I was like nah I'm not dealing with this um so they was really nice it was just different midwives constantly there was somebody new every half hour just coming in um because obviously different shifts and things like that and also some midwives were called off to other people giving birth and stuff like that so I never really had consistently the same person um but that was fine but yeah they was monitoring me very regularly so after about 12 hours of contractions they said that I was eight centimetres dilated. So they were checking me every so often, but it was about 12 hours. My mum had been to visit at this point. My dad had been to visit throughout. Like I can't remember specific times or anything like that. Um, but yeah, they, I was. this was on the Sunday, by the way. I was 12, uh, eight centimetres dilated. And at that point, this is when things took a turn because at that point, they decided to reduce my epidural because they wanted me to feel at the pushing stage so that I knew to push. Now, I had a screen next to me that told me when I was having contractions, so I could just look at that and be like, okay, I'll push now. But no, they wanted me to feel it and that was where it was awful because I felt like the worst pains ever. And I felt like because I had to lay down because I had the epidural, my legs were still like not working. I felt like I couldn't, you, you can't like release the pain by moving to a different area or, you know, a different position. You just have to deal with it. And when it's so, 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 so bad pain, you're, you just like, your brain is like I can't cope with this and you just have to like close your eyes and just brace yourself for the pain at this point I was pushing so I was about 10 centimeters after like a couple of hours um after being eight centimeters and mum was there Jamie was there and this midwife was there and she was like go on push 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 and my contractions were like five six minutes apart so they weren't like that close to each other and every time I pushed so every contraction I had I probably pushed three to four times and they're like really big pushes all of your energy everything like that so I was putting all of my energy into these pushes I was in so much pain I hadn't slept since Friday 
pretty much. So I was so tired. My eyes were like this. Like I was literally drifting off when, when I didn't have a contraction. And I was struggling. I was drained. I was tired. I was in so much pain. And I was trying to push the baby out. The baby was face up. So Bonnie was actually facing upwards. And that made it a little bit more difficult for me to give birth to her anyway. And I was pushing and the head would come out a little bit, but not really, like it was small progress. So I was pushing for two hours. Doctors were coming in and they were like, okay, we were gonna have to interject in a minute. And I was just struggling. The midwife was trying her hardest to like tell the doctors, just wait a little bit, she can do this. There was Jamie saying, you can do this. And the worst thing in the world when you know you can't do something is someone telling you you can do it. Because I knew at that point, after two hours, I can't do it. Zero progress made. The baby was not coming out. There was no, it, she was just slight moving back and forward. Like her head was coming out, back in, coming out, back in. There was no progress. All that was happening is I was getting more tired, more stressed, in more pain. The contractions were stronger because the epidural had pretty much totally gone. And I was just in an absolute mess. And the doctors were like, come on, you can do this. And I just, uh, my whole body was shaking at this point like I was physically like this I was shaking so much and afterwards I researched it and it says that a lot of people shake in birth when they've had a traumatic experience because of the adrenaline and because of the trauma um and like the shock of it to your body so I was shaking I was falling asleep I was crying like I was crying my eyes out um mum was crying um and I was like, you're not listening to me. I can't do this. Like, I knew I couldn't do it. Looking back, I definitely couldn't. Sorry, I just ran out of storage. I'm back now. Anyway, I think I know where I was at. I knew at that point that I couldn't push the baby out. Like, there was no way I'm that is happening. Like, it's not possible, okay? And I thought, because my bump was so big, I thought that means that the baby's going to be big. So I just mentally wasn't there and also I pushed as hard as I could I was pushing hard okay my face was red and this was whilst crying and shaking and everything I was trying um but yeah it wasn't working and I hadn't eaten bear in mind I hadn't eaten for well over 24 hours so I had zero energy in me as well and but that is the most tired I have ever been in my entire life and to be the most tired you've ever been in your entire life not eaten for 24 hours in the most intense pain ever shaking and crying and having to push out a baby is not happening and nobody was listening to me nobody listened except for mum I think mum understood I couldn't do it at that point so the doctors at this point came round and they suggested to me for me to try the suction um thing whatever it's called the suction cup or forceps and at this point, I said, no, 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 I'm not pushing anymore. I was crying. I was shaking. I was like, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not pushing. I don't want that. I want a C-section. I was saying, I regret not getting a C-section. I wish I'd done it this morning because I'd gone through so much. Um, and I was like, no, I'm struggling. I want a C-section. And the doctor was coming th towards me. She showed me this like list of risks for four set delivery and for the suction cup thing and I was having such intense contractions while she was explaining this to me whilst I was crying and basically the most biggest mess I've ever been in my life and she was just talking me through like very nicely and I was just like I don't even know what my life is right now like what is this um but I signed whatever she said because you know I can sign it it doesn't mean I have to go through with it um, so I managed that. Um, anyway, they then decided to take me to theatre so that they could give me like really strong, um, you know, what what's it called? Anesthetic. And it, that would fully numb me from the waist down, like fully, completely, no feeling whatsoever. So not even like a sensation, just totally zero feeling. Oh, Bonnie, are you waking up? I think she wants a feed. I'll try and rush the ending of this video. Anyway, I went through to theatre. I was having contractions in the corridor on this thing they're wheeling me through on my back and I was crying and shaking and the doctor in the theatre and well when I went in the theatre they were playing music so it was kind of chill vibes which was good but um one of the doctors came up to me he was really nice 
but he was like so what would you like to do then the are we okay to do the um suction cup because they can't do anything without my consent obviously and i was like you're gonna have to ask me this when i'm not in any pain because i could not even talk or process anything and the thought of pushing at that point was just a no-go situation and i was like i will answer that question when the anesthetic has kicked in so he left me for five minutes and he came back and I was a totally different person. Like when the anaesthetic kicked in, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll try the suction cup. Like obviously I was still a mess, but I wasn't crying or, you know, shouting or anything like that. I was a lot more calm. I was still shaking. Like my body was uncontrollably shaking anyway. Like I couldn't help that. Um, but he um, said, okay, great. So anyway, Jamie came in the room and he was there with me and... The guy was like, okay, are you ready to push? There was probably like 15 people in the room, maybe 20 people in the room, all like doing their own thing, like involved in this situation in a different way. Um, and uh, they'd put my legs like on stirrups and I was fully numb. And he was, they could see on the monitor when I was having contractions so they could tell me when to push. And this is when I was like, excuse me, where was this earlier when they wore down my epidural because they wanted me to feel when to push when I could have looked at the screen? I was fuming, I'm fuming about that now because that would have just changed everything because when you're in, so tired and so exhausted and you still have to push through the pain, that is the most awful thing ever. And if they hadn't have worn my epidural off, I might have been, you know, I probably still wouldn't have been able to push her out, but I wouldn't have been scre like crying my eyes out and in so much pain and trauma. Because at the end of the day, this experience is trauma to me and I don't look back on it in a good way. Um, obviously, I'm glad Bonnie's here and it's all good and it's all worked out well, but that doesn't mean the experience was positive for me at all. Um, but yeah, so anyway, in the theatre, I was pushing, 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 pushing. Um, they even told Jamie you should get a job there because he was like, push, 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 push. Um, and I did. I pushed and he pulled like the suction cup on her head. And I only had to push three times and she was out. And the machine was telling me when I was having contractions and I was like, okay, I didn't feel anything. It was easy. They did have to cut me open. Um, obviously didn't feel it because I had like numbing injections. Um, but I was fine with that because as long as the baby's out, that's all that matters. But that did tell me that if I was having to push earlier, then I would have tore open or like no wonder I was struggling earlier because they had to actually cut me open, um, if you see what I mean. And I was just thinking like, oh my God, thank God they did this now because I could not have dealt with it if I was pushing earlier on in the day um, and had to actually get cut open with zero painkillers. Like I would, no. So anyway, the baby came out, they put her on me for like two seconds. I was, a lot of people would say like, it's a magical moment when your baby's born and like it is. And it was all like, oh my God. But at the same time, I was still shaking. I was still like in a mess, like a total mess, like the worst I've ever been in my life. And I knew I had to deliver the placenta still. I knew I had to be stitched up. And I still knew there was a lot of that stuff going on. So anyway, Jamie went over with the baby to check that she was all right and she was fine. And they weighed her and everything like that. And then the placenta came out like after five minutes and um, one of the doctors had to put his hand like inside me like this and he was scraping out all the membranes from inside. And I remember thinking, I can't feel a single thing. And I was like, I like that. Like, this is good. This is, zero pain is excellent. Like, why don't people do this more? <laughs> because I was like, I don't understand how people can go through childbirth with zero painkillers unless it's like quick. Because I think for me, it's just because of the whole experience of the entire weekend just added on top of each other just to make the birth just really difficult. Um, So he was doing that for a while, probably like half an hour. Um, But I was all right at that point, but I was still like in a shook up way. Then they passed me the baby and they wheeled me back through and like to mum and she met the baby for the first time. Jamie was really excited. I was still in shock, like really, like my body was in so much shock from the experience I just had that I was trying to process everything. Um, 
and we did take some pictures and things which is good because it means I could kind of like look back on it when in the pictures because I could don't have much memory of it um but yeah so we went back through to the room and everything was a lot better we was in for months you know, they monitored me overnight. I think I stayed two nights there. No, I gave birth Monday morning at 11 minutes past five in the morning. And it was the following day, so the Tuesday that I was released. Um, the baby was fine. She weighed eight pounds, three ounce. She weighed 8.3 pounds and she was healthy or is healthy. She's been drinking loads since then. Um, and yeah, we left the hospital. I was like, thank God. The only good thing about being at the hospital was how nice a lot of the people were there. And also was about how, uh, it was also the food. I really liked the food when I could eat. My stitches are still healing, obviously. And I think for me, that was, that is the end of my birth experience. I'm glad it, like, that in the end, I didn't have a C-section because of the recovery but I would never put myself through that whole weekend over having a C-section. If I had to go through that or a C-section, I would have a C-section any day of the week because that to me was pure torture. Like it was literally awful. And I just cannot go through that ever, ever, ever again. A lot of people wouldn't have that experience. Some people have worse experiences, but the important thing is that me and the baby were fine, but it doesn't mean that it was a positive overall experience. For me and I just wanted to share it because you know it's a big thing in my life to happen and just because you know it's negative doesn't mean I shouldn't share the story um but yeah for me it was very difficult and it was just the pain and the things that I would do differently or ask for differently would be to still ask for the epidural 1000% but not ask them to diet down like or not let them diet down I would say no I'm gonna do this with the epidural because you can see on the screen the contractions it literally goes up the number goes up as you're contracting it gets to the top and then you push easy peasy I can read I can see um so yeah that for me I would that's what I would do differently and you know, maybe even just book a C-section, like that might even just be what I would have done because for me, you know, it, there's risks to it, but you know, I just thinking about that pain, see a little foot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll try not to waffle on now, but I don't want to put people off giving birth because at the end of the day, everyone has such different experiences and some people get induced and have lovely experiences, which is what some people have said. But the majority of people do say getting induced can be awful. Um, and that's what I experienced just because of the whole trauma of everything. But I think for me, the reason why it was so traumatic was lack of sleep for three days, no food, so no energy, um, shaking, crying, so much pain and um and having to push my way through the pain it was just awful so um that's why i found it difficult if oh my god if i didn't have any painkillers in that whole time that would have just been even worse oh my god um so yeah that is my birth story so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it hasn't put anybody off because you know maybe if you was on the fence about like getting an epidural or something you might be more convinced to I don't know but you can see how it goes or if you was going to get induced I would only probably get induced when you have to like and I I guess I kind of had to because the baby's heart rate and everything but if you don't have to get induced until like the week after I would probably wait if I was you um but yeah that's everything. If anyone has any questions about the birth or anything or anything at all, you can message me on Instagram. My Instagram is linked in the description. Um, but apart from that, I think I've covered everything. I am going to film a video this week or next week talking about my whole experience with pregnancy in general. So the first, second and third trimester. Um, but yeah, I think I've covered everything. But yeah, I feel like I have to end on something positive, um, positive things. The people at the hospital were really nice. 
very, 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 very nice people. Uh, midwives, all lovely. Doctors, very nice. They listened to me, except for that midwife when I was pushing. She was like, you can do this. And I was like, I'm not doing this. Like, shut your mouth, listen to me. Um, no, I didn't say that. Well, I might have done, I don't know. I was in so much pain. Um, but yeah, the food was good and my room was nice. But yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye.